Professor Sam Madden, reporting live from the Arizona desert, where scientists have found an unusual metal monolith in the cliffs outside of Flagstaff. The monolith, which you can see behind me, was found by a young database researcher who reported that the large object was deeply embedded in the corporate bedrock. She also told me that upon closer examination, it appeared to come from the 1970s, and that it bore strange inscriptions and some kind of warning about breaking of stones. Scientists are telling me that this monolith is some kind of software artifact designed in a bygone era when researchers believed DBMSs needed control over all layers of data layout, storage, and manipulation. We'll update you on this breaking story as we hear more. Over to you, Sam. Thanks, Sam. Now over to Sam in our presentation room for more on this breaking story. Thanks, Sam. It's a pleasure to be here to talk about our work on self-organizing data containers. This is joint work with the MIT Data Systems Group and some folks at Intel. So in case you haven't guessed yet, the database system is the monolith. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean that traditionally database system designs, the, the sort that were developed in the 1970s and 80s, have insisted on controlling all aspects of data storage, layout, IO, memory management, in some cases, even the hardware. And this really isn't compatible with the modern cloud-based data, data ecosystem. And what we're seeing is a shift towards more disaggregated designs. What do I mean by disaggregation? Well, I mean that the system gets split into layers where the database system is responsible, for example, for the query processing, and the cloud-based system where data is increasingly being stored is responsible for the actual storage, replication, durability of the data. And this has some advantages from the, ask, from the point of view of both users and database system designers. For example, if you're building an OLAP system, maybe you don't need to worry about durability at all. All you have to do is worry about query processing and you just let the storage system ensure that the data is highly available, replicated, and so on and so forth. From a user perspective, maybe you don't have to worry about loading your data anymore. You just query it using the database system directly you know, running on top of, for example, Parquet files living in Amazon S3. And, and this also enables sort of a separation of concerns from a sort of overall engineering perspective, like the storage system can be scaled independently from the data processing system. This might reduce costs or increase efficiency. The problem with this disaggregated design where we separate storage from query processing is really performance. So for example, if you look at the Amazon Redshift system versus the Redshift Spectrum system, where Spectrum is a system that is able to query files as they live in S3 and Redshift is a more traditional monolithic design, you see that the Redshift is about seven to eight times faster than uh, Spectrum when running a traditional warehousing workload like TPCH. And why is this? Well, because this separation of storage and compute is leads to inefficiency. So Parquet and these other storage formats aren't optimally laid out on disk. Um, and this is further exacerbated by relatively long latencies to cloud storage. You have to go over network to read data. Um, and further, these cloud storage formats like Parquet don't contain statistics. You don't have histograms. That's bad for optimizability. Uh, and you lack you know, metadata that might be useful, for example, for determining how to optimally lay out the data. Um, and furthermore, you just these, these storage formats themselves can't evolve or change over time. They typically just have one design, like a column-oriented design, and they can't encompass a lot of really cool new ideas about data layout uh, from modern current database research. All right, so our proposal is a new cloud storage format called self-organizing data containers. The idea with a self-organizing data container is that it incorporates three key ideas. So first of all, they can in take on many complex physical designs that go beyond simple column orientation. These are things like replication or complex data partitioning. We'll talk more about that in a minute. They can also explicitly represent metadata that might be useful to optimize the layout of the data, as well as allow the query optimizer to have access to statistics it needs to generate good query plans. And then finally, they're self-organizing, meaning that as clients operate on them, they actually transform them into better layouts over time. So there has been some work on new cloud storage formats. Um, Parquet and Arrow are very popular cloud data representations, but as I've discussed, they're not really optimal for database systems. 
um, Apache Hudi, Iceberg, and Delta Lake. Uh, these are new file formats designed to address some of the shortcomings of things like Parquet, but they primarily, for, fo primarily focus on updates and adding support for transactions. So SDCs are different and then our focus really is on high performance analytic query processing, as well as building a storage format that automatically optimizes and relay out, gets relayed out by the clients over time. All right, so I just wanna give a brief aside to talk about some of the cool work that's been going on in physical layouts to give you an idea of what I mean by storage systems that can take it advantage of you know, new, new layout optimizations. So imagine that you have some query workload over some data space. So here I've shown a two-dimensional table. Uh, so imagine these are dates and sales volumes of different products. Okay, so we've got queries now, which are represented by these boxes that look at different regions of this data space. So here, the red queries look across you know, a few dates and many products, and the green queries look across you know, uh, you know, many dates but few products. All right, so these are range queries to different parts of this space. So if you were to think about how to partition the data in this case, uh, the best sort of one dimensional partition you could come up with might be to slice the data in these sort of narrow bands uh, where each, each band encompasses just a few, for example, dates. Um, each one of these would be a data partition. And this kind of layout would be pretty good for these red queries because we'd only have to go read you know, one or a few of these partitions in order to answer a query. But it's pretty bad for the green queries, right? So instead, what we'd like to do is to have some kind of layout where we you know, use different partitionings for different parts of the data space. So for this particular example, you know, we might have the sort of lower left and you know, upper, the, sorry, the bottom and the upper left portions of the space partitioned in these you know, partitions that are good for the red queries. And then we might have the upper right partitioned in a way that's good for the green queries. So there's been uh, several recent papers that have looked at this, um, our own work on a system called Tsunami, as well as uh, some work uh, on, on, a, on something called QD trees from Microsoft. All right, so given this sort of idea now of optimal, of, of you know, advanced physical layouts, and this idea that we wanna have clients participate in the reorganization of data, I'm gonna present the initial design that we've come up with for SDCs. So SDCs uh, are most notably uh, implemented without a centralized server or controller in the process. So the SDC, the, the code of SDCs is completely implemented inside of a library that is you know, linked into client applications. So clients interact via this library with SDCs as they sit on cloud, on the cloud or on disk. So we have multiple clients interacting with the same SDC. Um, and we imagine these clients are quite varied. They could be data scientists from a IPython notebook. They could be data analytic systems like a new optimized version of Amazon Redshift that wants to take advantage of the storage layouts and SDCs, or they could be machine learning pipelines that are, you know, again, want efficient access to data on disk. All right. So internally, these SDC files are gonna be represented as, you know, several different data objects. So first of all, if you look down at the lower left here, you see that there are several different versions of the data. The different versions of the data are sort of you know, created over time as clients interact with them. And each version is represented as a set of data partitions where each partition is a parquet file that lives on disk. In addition, these SDCs contain some metadata information. For example, a list of all the versions, the file names, the ranges of the data in each one of the blocks or partitions, as well as some statistics uh, about the data itself. And now the key thing about uh, SDCs is that in addition to querying the data, uh, clients as they interact with the data will spend some amount of their time doing reorganization work. So we call this a, a fee that clients you know, pay in order to, in exchange for being able to do some kind of access to the data. And the idea, the key idea with SDCs is that this reorganization work they are gonna do is gonna be divided into kind of two steps. There's optimization work to figure out what the next optimal layout of the data would be. And then there's reorganization work where we're gonna transform the data uh, into a new representation that's you know, performs better. So, uh, and the, the key idea that we have and we're working towards in SDCs is that this both optimization and reorganization work will be divided into small uh, sort of mini tasks 
which are shared across multiple clients. So we don't ultimately want one client to be responsible for doing all of the optimization or reorganization work in order to arrive at a new layout. We want this to be an incremental process that many clients participate in. In our initial implementation, we've implemented this as a sort of single optimization and reorganization step, which is explicitly done by one client where one client does all of the work, but that's not the long-term vision for STCs. So to show you why we're excited about the you know, performance possibilities of SDCs, we uh, built, our, to, built our initial implementation, and then we ran four real workloads from a data visualization uh, application on top of them. These workloads involve queries that predicate over multiple dimensions. So for example, one of the workloads is a tweet map like we see here, where there's a geospatial you know, predicates that uh, zoom into a particular geographic region, as well as temporal predicates that predicate on certain ranges of time and queries on you know, particular tweets or hashtags. So if you look at the performance of this, you see that SDCs, uh, our optimized SDC implementation does much, much better. So what we did here is we uh, started off by running you know, a, a workload of queries against an unoptimized representation of SDCs. That generated a query log, and then we optimized the layout of the SDC and reran the queries on it. And you can see that when we reran the queries on the optimized layout, their performance is much, much better. Uh, oftentimes significantly better than uh, even th than the best you know, single dimension range partitioning. Um, and this is why we're excited about the, the prospect of these things, because even with the simple optimizations which we've implemented so far, which really only are the uh, acuity tree style layout, we've been able to get um, you know, th these kinds of pretty significant performance advantages. And we think that as we incorporate more performance optimizations, the performance will get even better. I just want to wrap up with a few quick research challenges, and this is part of why we're excited about building SDCs. So the first one is this idea of coordinator-free coordination. So remember, we don't have a centralized server in SDCs, but we have to get clients to agree on periodic reorganization that they're going to do. And so in order to do this, clients are going to need to you know, somehow collectively decide that a particular reorganization should be undertaken and then to coordinate to actually make that reorganization happen. And so in order to do this, we're going to have to somehow record in the SDC files themselves that a particular reorganization is underway and the progress that the clients have made through it and to guarantee that we somehow end up in some you know, uh, consistent reorganized state at the end of that process. The second challenge is this reorganization needs to be done in sort of a pay-as-you-go fashion. We don't want one client to be responsible for doing all the work. We want the reorganization and optimization work to be divided up into subtasks, as I showed in the architecture diagram. And then the third challenge is that we want these modification. These clients are going to be interacting with this SDC concurrently, and they might concurrently be making decisions about modifications that they want to make. For example, new storage layouts they want to create, or doing space reclamation operations on old data inside of the SDC. And we need to ensure that those reorganizations happen in a way that maintains the consistency of the SDC, doesn't result in race conditions where two clients are you know, trying to do the same thing or creating divergent versions of the data. Again, we think this is a really pretty interesting challenge, especially when you think about doing this through a file system like S3, which has pretty poor uh, data consistency properties. All right, so just to conclude, SDCs are a new file format for high performance data analytics. They support multiple advanced storage layouts, including instance optimized layouts and replication. Uh, they encode metadata about the access patterns and statistics to improve optimizability. And they're able to adapt their layout over time without requiring any use of an explicit coordinator. So that's all I had for you. Uh, thank you very much.